workshop we had in the fall. You know, people, people think we should be looking for sponsorships and that kind of thing, you know, to help with the programming. I'm not against doing that. I just think that we should do it in a very clear, um, cohesive way. And if we do, if we do it, uh, you know, in, in this case, we're, I just think we're doing it backwards. We need the guidelines and then... But, but and if we see. give it to our attorney, and I know the money is an issue, but if we give it to our attorney, what, um, except for the cost of the attorney, what's the risk? The, to me, I'm very uncomfortable in dealing with an organization I know nothing about, except what is said to me, you know, by someone standing here. Um, it's a, a lobbying organization and you know, I don't think it's I don't think it's responsible for the school board representing the whole town and all the kids to enter into an agreement with an organization we know so little about. I'm a little confused. Um, maybe you can clarify what does USFA get out of this with the schools? Is it nothing? It's just a basically we, we USFA makes its money uh, two different ways. One they get a very small percentage of the equipment. They mark up the equipment from Coastal Athletics a certain percent. Also, out of the memberships that are driven, they make $4.93 per membership. So it's basically through memberships driven through the unions and so forth, and also based on percentage, and certainly based on the equipment. Which, again, the schools really don't have much. We have to basically explain to the corporations that come in where all monies are going meaning how much money actually Coastal Athletics is charging and how much money USFA is making from that equipment as well. So that, that as far as the corporation's end of things, is their, their major concern, how much of our money is actually going into these school systems. And we have, to, we have to justify it that way. Okay, I guess I still don't understand what the people that get the memberships get. Like you mentioned BIW getting oh. all those memberships. What does that do for them? What does it do for them? As individuals, they end up getting... A, a hat, a shirt, a, a, they end up getting a card which they get discounts off of certain sporting events tickets. Um, so it's like support of an organization. It's, it's, that's all it is, is a supporting organ of an organization. How much does a membership cost for an individual? 19.95. For a year? That's correct. And you get about four? Four dollars and 93 cents is the bottom line on that. And then $10 goes towards supporting these school programs and your lobbying efforts on the uh, more professional level of sports, is that? Uh, all, all the money, is, again, um, what we should probably do is get you a, a full breakdown of what the memberships are because that might help you as well to see how very little money is going to the USFA. I'll tell you $1.95 of every membership is going to the state general fund. Right now, for example, we talked to Senator Cohen about this fund, and we told him because we were probably going to be having a, getting a check from Bath Ironworks slash the un, local sex union for $25,000. And what can we do with this? We called up to the state general fund, which I don't know if everyone knows there is a state gen, general, general athletic fund available. That usually goes to repairing uh, buildings, et cetera, et cetera. We told them if we had a check for $25,000 for them, what would they do with it? And their, their response was probably 95% of it would go to administration costs, finding out what to do with that money. <laughs> so it was, it was a little bit on the ridiculous side. <laughs> but, what we, but what we've decided to do through our uh, legal channels also is to, to begin to develop a general athletic fund itself, a nonprofit fund, which we would take that dollar ninety-five and put it into a nonprofit fund, and um, and just dis disperse that money accordingly into the athletic programs throughout the state of Maine. So we're, we're, what we're trying to do is really drive any and all monies that we end up getting back into the school systems, because we we truly believe that it's needed. And just the other day, um, Bill Clinton went out on the lawn and said, "We're going to stop uh, school spending." and that we need help from the private sector, is what he said. Connie, it was the day I came in to see you, as a matter of fact, when he came out and said that. They're going to need help from the private sector in order to, get the, um, to help the school systems out. Um, the, the agreement that you're presenting to us tonight for these sports uniforms is just that. It's just one little piece for these particular sports uniforms. What are our ties to you, then, in the future? Let's say we develop a policy on um, 
athletic uh, sponsors in business, and we wanted to directly contact um, certain businesses and get them to be sponsors of, let's say, our, um, I don't know, lacrosse. girls lacrosse team. Is that at all in conflict or with the agreement we have made with you? The only agreement that you would be signing is an agreement saying that you have a non-compete with the company that we have bringing in. For example, Yankee Ford has asked to come in and do one program just to see how it starts, see how it works. Um, you, we, you would be signing something saying that you were not able to go to Yankee Ford and ask them to do everything else on your own. You would have to use USFA as a buffer. Yet if you went to Coca-Cola and asked them to come in and do that stuff on your own, you could. But I think, I think is that what you're getting at? Well, mm. yeah, partly what I'm getting at, yeah. Uh, how long are we then tied with Yankee Ford that we could never... On the contract, it will say a date, meaning you can do this for one year, you can do it up to three years. The most important part about the contract is if you end up doing it for three years, you get the equipment for the first year and all the replacement equipment for the next two years after that. So you really get three years of funding of that school's, that program's equipment or uniforms for the next three years. Um, so usually um, people would say, if we're, getting, if we're getting that equipment for nothing. What if, um, let's say, there's a company, USFA, is directly um, trying to get sponsorship of for a different school system, let's say Gorham or whatever. Could we on our own still approach that company if that's not in the agreement? With yes. You will, you, will, you will have first right of refusal on every, every company that we come back with. If we came back and said Yankee Ford, you could say no. Um, if you went to any of these companies on your own, it's, it's your prerogative. The only thing that you're going to be signing is whatever agreement that you sign with whatever organization is on the contract, that's the only company we ask you not to go solicit. How do you match the businesses with the towns? Why was Yankee Ford selected for this one? They, select, they selected you they selected. personally. And is that how most of the businesses, once you approach them, they select the school district they would like to? Yes. Bath Iron Works in Local 6 want Bath, Bath Morse. Uh, Brunswick, which has already signed up with us as well. They, they would love to have Scarborough, uh, Portland. Um, they, they've, they select their own um, certain, uh, okay. certain areas. What we would like to do is because we only have a couple of schools signed up as far as just accepting the concept of this whole thing, I think once, once this hits the communities and people start realizing what's out there, what we're looking to do is find uh, if somebody comes in and, uh, and wants a high-profile high school such as a Portland High School, we would match them up with a probably the smallest school on the, on the totem pole. So what, what we're doing with Senator Cohen also is in his offices, we're trying to get which is the most needy and which is the least needy and trying to match up the two schools. So if a company comes in and says, we want to take uh, Portland High School only, we're going to say, if you're going to take them, you're also going to take them. So what we're trying to do is try to give everyone um, equal share if we can. Other questions? What was the additional clause that Gorm wanted? Uh, See, the, I have a hard time approving, you know, a contract that may not be complete. Mm -hmm. So right, the, the the extra clause in there, he just wanted to um, finalize that if they wanted to terminate after the, you have the right to terminate after every year, is what it says. So at the end of the first year, they can say we don't want you anymore, and the and the contract will be null and void. And what will happen? The equipment is still yours. Is, is this what we have in here, a copy of the proposed contract? I don't have the one with the new language, with the clause. Additional but, clause. but aside from that, this is the contract? Um, this is the, what, I think, the process I think, that you and I talked about, Brendan, was that this was sufficient uh, after discussion of the board, depending on what the board wanted to do, for me to go forward and ask our attorneys to review it. Also, um, I have tried to contact one or two of the people that you have listed here, I haven't had a discussion with them yet, other superintendents. And just frankly, uh, if the board, the reason we put it on tonight, partly because of the timing, was I frankly would like some guidance from the board as to whether they want me to pursue the further checks. I mean, we brought you the information such as it is with some holes, I will admit. Um, if it is a concept that uh, the board is really uncomfortable with, then the discussion pretty much ceases, although frankly, I would be willing to talk to other superintendents and see if there's something that their process has clarified that we haven't yet heard or what have you, but every board's gonna have somewhat 
probably some some difference in the questions they're asking. Um, but uh, it sounds to me like it's a new venture. I'm sure your heart's in the right place. Um, budgets are tight. On the other hand, I understand what the concerns that the board are raising. You and I actually have talked about some of those. And um, it's sometimes difficult to find the right uh, pieces, but so be it. Priscilla? Well, you're, you're not going to disappear. So if we decide that we really can't go forward without getting more information from you, we can address this at a later time, too, right? Well, of is course. this a one-shot deal? Of course not. Okay. Except we won't get yeah. the spring baseball uniforms. Well, one, one, one reason why we brought up uh, we want to get this to the board today is because of the fact that we want to see if it works. We don't want to, we don't want to bring it throughout the entire school system uh, quite yet. We want to see if the system works. If, if we were able to go ahead and fund just the baseball program because of what Yankee Ford has offered us, the uniforms aren't, aren't, wouldn't even be ready probably till halfway through the season. So there might be 10, seven to 10 games that the, the, the um, baseball team would, would be required to wear these uniforms. And it would probably be a very good test on what, would, what was to happen or find out the response of the community. If, if things didn't work out after seven games, it would be cut short and you can terminate the right of the contract. <laughs> I'm uncomfortable with that approach. I really think we need to look at it, not on, under the pressure of looking of, you know, whether we can save this little bit of money right now. Um, I think we need to have a policy in place. And frankly, if this is the contract, um, there are already so many issues in here that I can see that aren't addressed that I wouldn't be happy with unless they were addressed. I can't see spending the money on the attorney to, to get this worked out before we have more information about this organization and we have some clear thought in our head about what we want to do about corporate sponsorship. And maybe, you know, a year from now or sometime, um, this will be a great idea, but I don't, I don't, think, we're, I don't think we're ready for it. And I, and I think that athletic committee really needs to meet. And, uh, you know, this is the, one of the types of issues that needs to be discussed. So I just think it's premature. It actually goes way beyond the athletic issue. It might not just be corporation right. sponsoring athletic teams. It could yep. be all different aspects of the yep. school. Um, so I think, it's, I think it has to be looked at actually separate from that athletic um, committee. No, it will. Uh, I mean, yeah. Policy committee plus the yeah. athletic committee needs to look at it specifically. Yeah. So. Carla. Um, it's an idea that I generally like, and I think it's worth our time to look into it. I think it's a good source of money um, in many ways, but I don't particularly like making it too hasty decision just because something shows up at our doorstep, so to speak. So I think in general the concept is a really good one and I think we should pursue the concept. I would concur. I think we need to refer to the policy subcommittee for policy and I, and I don't think it's something we can put off for a year because I no. think it has budget in, we already know what our, we were just approved the budget for next year. We will be starting again in the fall looking at a worse scenario than we had this year. And I think we need to look at this type of funding, um, especially where $41,000 of this year's budget was for equipment and supplies. I would agree with that. I really think it is a concept we are interested in and want to pursue. Um, and I hope you will have patience with us as we go through our process. Um, but I really um, think we do need to go through our process. Um, but it is something we are probably interested in in the future, either with you or another organization. But um. what, what I will try to have drawn up or um, I will try to get to you um, is some type of mission statement, because I think that's very important to have at this point in the game. You need a mission statement. Um, any financial information you have? And the financial but, information. Yeah. Of course, the financial information, because it's such a new adventure, that there's been no capital that has been put into the company. It's basically been us working on the side, doing this as a part-time, full-time job, working with the school systems, and uh, so on and so forth. So, um, yeah. Are there other board members who have a comment? I, I mean, I really think um, we do need to do it as quickly as possible, as Charlie suggests, not wait till next year, but really get on it and try to write a policy and um, 
get more information from you. And I mean, one, one thing that this, I mean, if, if we can certainly get this into play, I mean, if we can end up freeing up X amount of dollars into the, into the athletic program, that will free up more money into the other programs that end up um, taking a, um, a cut or have, have cut for the budget. And um, it'll certainly put a little bit more money into those tills or into upcoming sports. I mean, we've, we've tried to think of everything by getting into this and um, we'll do whatever we need, just ask. And uh, at this point, I'll try to get a mission statement going, a financial statement, we just don't have it yet. It's a new venture. Yeah, even your, the information you put out to people soliciting memberships and yeah. things I think would be helpful. Um, okay. And we can uh, refer it to our policy committee meeting, unless other people have any other thoughts. No, I, I guess I would just be really surprised if other um, school departments haven't wanted that, you know, that backup. I mean, anybody can come in and, and make a presentation. Um, I'm a little surprised, eight months into the venture, you wouldn't have, you know, a written presentation you were given to board. So, um, you know, both for us, but, you know, for any future business you're trying to solicit, I would strongly suggest that you pull something together, I think your job will be a lot easier um, if you do. I guess I, I would have voted for um, funding this this year since we have just a few weeks left until the end of the season and then our contract could be null and void after we see how it works with the baseball uniforms and during that time go on with our policy and looking at what we have and getting your information. But. Any other comments? Um, I have question for you. You mentioned that you hoped in the future that um, companies on the New York Stock Exchange would look at you in terms of purchasing your company? Yes. Okay. Um, I concur with Ann that I really think it needs to come from a policy point of view first. Um, I guess we know what our charge is. <laughs> <laughs> policy subcommittee. Um, I don't think there's any vote or anything to okay. take in. No? Well, I think you've heard from a board as well as from me some of those questions of course you and I discussed and I thank you for your effort I think that as I said before your heart's in the right place um, but I certainly understand where boards are coming from they don't want to get into something that isn't pretty uh, understandable um, I will because it won't cost me any money to call my fellow superintendents, I will do that and give you some feedback and I'd be happy to give you some feedback too, Brendan, as to uh, where their process is and what some of their issues are and so forth. So we'll get, we can pick up some information that way. And, and information from you also, Brendan, would be great on the company. If you can get it to Connie, she will get it to the policy group and we'll try to collect sample policies from other schools on sponsors and, and work on this. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for coming, Brittany. Uh, the next item on the agenda is consideration of the superintendent's nomination for continuing contract teachers. And for those of you uh, who have been through this process in previous years, you realize that we have two lists here. I'll go through them. The first one, teacher scheduled to go on continuing contract. That means that these are teachers who have been with us two years, who have been uh, evaluated in each of those two years and have been discussed by administration and I'm happy to nominate the following list to go on to continuing contract. Uh, Panko School, Linda Alfiero, currently teaching kindergarten, Joshua Olins, first grade teacher, Allison Hawks, third grade teacher, and Deb Twombly, third grade teacher. Middle School, Claudine Bravo, Spanish teacher, Laurie Turley, music teacher, mm -hmm. Stephen Price, sixth grade, and Jamie Michaud, eighth grade. At the high school, Sarah Franklin, English, Amy Russell, English, Hannah Ashley, Social Studies, Norm Richardson, Music, Carrie Curtis, Chemistry, Tony Gidoni, Math Teacher, and Tom Robinson, Special Education. You can take that as one vote, but I will go ahead and nominate the second list and you can make two separate votes out of this. You could make it one if you wish. Scheduled for second year probationary teacher contracts. Middle school, Cheryl Higgins, uh, part-time. This She was on a one-year contract this year, seventh and eighth grade language arts. High school, Mary Hudson, speech and language. Uh, Michael Efron, math. Barbara McDonald, reading, part-time. Tina Johnson, special education. Richard Roethlisberger, art and photography. Sonia Medina, French and Spanish, part-time. And Jeff Rosenblum, science and math. 
Is there a motion? Carla? I move that we approve teachers scheduled to go on to continuing contract 1996-97 school year as read by the superintendent and approve teacher schedule for second year probationary teacher contracts 1996-1997 school year as read by the superintendent. Is there a second? Second. Charlie? Questions? I have one. Is um, Linda Alfiero on a half-time contract? Yeah, she is part-time currently. She is for this uh, quarter or the last few weeks of the school year uh, in addition to her regular part-time contract she is also uh, picking up a, another section but that doesn't change her part-time status just because we put half time and things on True. the other page That's I just correct. wanted to clarify that Linda mm -hmm. Alfiero would be a half-time contract however um, as we post uh, opportunities or openings and of course, you will recall that we do have a, um, we had a resignation full-time teacher at the kindergarten, and we will be posting those openings. Um, what this says is, and I have no idea what her intentions are, but were she to apply as long, along with others to apply, um, she doesn't have, you know, an automatic right to that position, but at the same time, she, she is free to apply for Exactly, but it's a half-year continuing contract. Yes. Um, any other discussion or questions? All those in favor? 7-0. Next item on the agenda is nominations for athletic coaching positions, 95-96. And you have uh, two in your packet. Peter Rink, seventh grade baseball. Excuse me, it's three. Oh, it is too. It's too big. Right. Steve Leet, assistant track at the high school. And you do have some backup information on each of those people. Is there a motion? Gail? I move Steve Leet for the assistant track at the high school and Peter Rink for the seventh grade baseball. Is there a second? Ann? Questions, discussion? Yeah. I'm just going to make the plea again. Okay, we have information on Steve Leet, but and I know Peter Rank, so it's not a problem for me. But we really don't have any background on his his baseball ability, and of course Rick's not listening again. But anyway, <laughs> just the, just the general plea for more specific information. <laughs> Athletic position. More detailed In the bio, information. Bio on those people. I know you're used to hearing that, Rick. But. Any other questions, discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. Uh, the next item is the co-curricular fee committee report and recommendations. Uh, yes, except that I didn't really, uh, I put in the minutes from the meeting we have, but if you read the minutes, uh, essentially, excuse me, I'm looking at the wrong sheet of paper myself. You will see that we did, in fact, not finish the process and that we had set a second meeting uh, for the end of April. So I don't really expect this to be a vote item. If you have any feedback at this point, uh, I would be happy to uh, receive that and take it back to uh, our next meeting. I did, in fact, uh, attach to this, because this is the process we used last year, uh, our recommendations for um, changes in certification related stipends, which frankly is reflected in your current budget. Thank you. Any other questions for Connie? Anne? I just want to um, thank you for um, the hard work on going through that teacher certification restructuring. That's, that's what I understood would be happening and it's I, I think it looks I think it looks really good well I think it will work I mean Mary really is a person who deserves the thanks um, and the members of the committee I mean I did work with them and we have certainly discussed it but um, we're hopeful that this will be a uh, um, a sensible way of dealing with a variety of issues can, can I just also ask Nancy Hutton one question since a these co-curricular positions at the middle school were new this year. Is there going to be an evaluation of how they went um, just to see if they're worth, worth doing again next year? That was part of the feedback that they sent the committee. 
Um, they have a feedback sheet where they fill out what they did, how many hours they used approximately, and adjustments thereof. And that's one of the reasons we made some adjustments in some of our requests uh, I guess for I next year. More from the, in terms of what, how the students like them. Um, we we could have the students fill out a, an information um, sheet. We haven't done that in the past, but it's certainly something we could do. I think it would. I think it actually wouldn't be a bad idea for all of them, but you know this. Um, I think. Were you be looking good. specifically at the ones that were added this year? Yeah, the, yeah, the ones that were new, just to see what the feedback is from uh, from the kids. One of them we are very aware of. We've had some difficulty with our newspaper, uh -huh. yep. and um, that adjustment has already been made, and we've made some internal changes for next year. Great. So, thank you. That is an area that we know that we were aware of. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other feedback? Um, I'm sure talk to Connie. Okay. Oh, Charlie. I'm your board representative to the committee. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I think most of, most of the work's done, except we're still working on the high school. So. Okay. And the uh, um, certification uh, plan, I think, was, had the endorsement of the committee and definitely has my endorsement. Mm. Okay. That looks good. Thank you. Um, the last uh, of oh, the next item on the agenda is the preliminary report on the calendar for 9697. It should have come in the mail today, maybe. Um, Most people. Well, is there anybody without a calendar? It came late. There you go. Yeah. Anybody else? No. Okay. Um, this is my 13th year as a superintendent. It is the first time I can remember having a calendar discussion that went with even a modicum of smoothness. <laughs> so in a sort of stunned moment, I will say that that was the easiest calendar I've ever worked on. So here it is. As um, far as I know, there aren't any real controversial elements left. Our process, however, <laughs> requires us to put it on the agenda in April and bring it back again in May, we did have the association president there, so uh, we had the association represented. However, the association does, we have an advise and consult requirement with the association so that it gets circulated. Uh, we had administrators there. Um, no, we didn't. We didn't have all the administrators there. But we did take it up at our administrative meeting last Friday and had a chance for everybody to look at it there, too. And astonishingly, it seemed to be fairly problem-free in that form also. Connie, what's not questions. noted here is that August date that would be a teacher day. Oh, that's right. It's, uh, um, it should be on I there. think it's um, August 29th. It, 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 it's is, noted it is on the bottom. Oh, sorry. Okay. It's, it's written. It probably needs to be. Where do you have highlighted it? Yeah, 829. Right, right underneath it says 829 mm -hmm. teacher workshop oh, day. Okay. Oh, because I was going to ask where that at fifth workshop day was. Yeah. So it's, I guess we need to use red. In, the, in the final copy of the calendar, I'll try to make it more predominant so people can see it. I mean, perhaps we could stick it up above or yeah. something so people can see it. Um, and we won't run into any graduation problems with this calendar either. Oh, we no, have another no. storm winter. No, right? no we, we were very careful about that. I wanted to have July 12th, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, well, okay. <laughs> We did our best to think about the various. Of course, next year you won't have any snow days. The it was the request of the teachers um, that the January 2nd and 3rd be two teacher workshop days um, put together mm -hmm. at that time that they felt they would be productive um, and that the staff, the system wide staff development committee would help work on planning those. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, Charlie and Charlie both, I think, have comments. Charlie, did you want to go? It really doesn't impact the. the calendar, I just want to know where Ponco's trimester <laughs> study is and if, if it's going to be implemented or not. <laughs> it doesn't impact this calendar because I would imagine if you went to a trimester, it would follow the middle school's trimester. The group is reporting tomorrow. <laughs> That's tomorrow Thursday. We did discuss okay. that at the meeting and we figured it didn't impact this calendar so that whatever... The only reason I'm raising it is to maybe push it. Yeah. Okay. Well, they've been working on it. And actually, the comment that was made in that meeting was, was quite instructive to me. It was an issue that I frankly had not been, uh, hadn't really put into perspective. The current method of reporting at Pond Cove is actually twice. 
It's a semester report with a kind of interim report halfway between, if I understood the comment that was made. Um, so that by, I think part of the problem has been that um, un unless this gets smoothed out, and I, obviously we need to wait for the report, um, going to a trimester, trimester could suggest to teachers that they're actually doing three reports instead of two, three written reports instead of two, which was frankly uh, something that until the teacher said it the other day, I hadn't heard anybody make that particular comment before. Uh, and so I can see why there, uh, it has been a longer process than some of us thought might be the case, but let's wait to hear the report. And Carla? Okay. Um, yeah, my comment sort of related to those two teacher days in January, actually. My first glance at this calendar, I think two weeks off in a row looks very extreme to me. With January 1st occurring on a Wednesday this year, it looks like that was used as an excuse to get an entire second week off of school. It's just two whole weeks off right in a row, and then another week in February, and then another week in April. And I counted the um, vacation days, the days that have the double slashes, this current year and with this calendar, and there are two more of those days on this calendar. There can't be. What, what, I which counted the 24, two more I counted it, it twice. Wait, well, which ones? Did we, you mean we inserted days. new? new Sla uh, the double slash days. There There's, could be, Connie, because we could be just going oh, later. There are two more later. of those days on this calendar. It is it actually a long Christmas vacation, and we did battle with that. And. Um, Oh, you mean for the students? Yes, yeah, for the oh, students. I'm not, because, I'm not okay, talking about because the we can't, I'm talking only those double the holiday. Ah, yeah. Okay, yeah. No, I didn't count the two, the work yeah. days. No, okay. and it is a long Christmas break. The reality was we, the teachers are going to be working those days anyway. They're not right. getting a longer Christmas break, and that we would just bring the kids back on that Tuesday the 2nd if we didn't do it, and we'd be inserting teacher days other places, which would mean mm. breaking up more so weeks. Good. And that this way, yeah, it wasn't felt that we were losing the continuity that you get when you add two teacher days in and break up more weeks than we already have in the fall and winter. Um, and we definitely address the issue of the February and April breaks and when are we going to feel ready to move from that maybe to a one week March, March vacation. And again, it wasn't quite the time to, to, to take that on right now until um, mm -hmm. we, we felt a well, it's more fine if it was the consensus. I frankly would rather see a few more weeks with the four days in the teacher workshops interspersed than two weeks off in a chunk, but that's my personal. This, this is the first time we've had such a beautifully <laughs> complete I know, I just have to say that. We, we want you to know so far since I voted against the calendar that year when we had like every other week was there was right, a disruption. There are some yeah. Yeah. We want you to notice that starting um, February 24th, we really go straight for about um, eight, weeks. Eight, weeks eight weeks with no breaks. Yeah. And, and November looks good. Yeah, so November better. usually has days it's off better. every week. In that sense, it's it much is better. better. And, and September, um, you know, to it's a full month to October 10th I, I, is a I, good long stretch. It's a big difference. I do feel I have to say <laughs> that every single calendar has 175 teacher pupil days, wherever they are, <coughs> 175 in five teacher workshop days, wherever they are. Uh, frankly, if you really want to make a change, consider your round school. Um, is there any other input on the calendar? Congratulations. <laughs> Thank well, you. Well, you don't, you don't adopt it today. Anyway. No, but it will come back in Haunted. next month. I'm sure there's going to be some <laughs> other problem, but anyway, that's so much for them. Um, the next item on the agenda is a consideration of the, um, to enter executive session for the purpose of discussing negotiations and the superintendent search. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Seven zero. You can now see. Oh. <laughs> we'll have you see the television. Everybody smell.